All right, let's learn about 10.3, accounting for cash and credit card sales. We have two learning objectives here. First of all, record cash and credit card sales using cash receipts journal. And secondly, journalize cash receipts on account using a cash receipts journal. First of all, let's rewind. You have already learned that customers can buy on account as a payment option. Today, we're gonna to learn how to account for the use of credit and debit cards like Visa, Discover, MasterCard, etc. as a payment method. Also in the past, you learned how to journalize cash sales. Because a merchandising business usually involves a large number of cash sales transactions, we will learn how to account for cash sales more concisely. Um, okay, open-ended question, and it's on a video, so it's sort of awkward. Um, name the credit cards you are familiar with. In our wallets at the Shellhammer family, we have a Discover, which is our Sam's Club, um, a MasterCard, can't remember that one, <laughs> and um, something else. Um, we try not to use our credit cards too much. Dave Ramsey's taught us that. Um, but basically, uh, next question, do you know of any stores that do not accept credit cards? I can't name any off the top of my head, but I do know of stores that um, don't allow credit card charging for under a certain amount. Say if you're spending, you know, 10 bucks, they won't let you use a credit card. Um, and do you know why a store would not accept credit cards? Well, those stores have to pay a fee to get the credit cards processed. So, you know, if it's a really small amount, they're not going to want to use a credit card. They're not going to want you to use a credit card because they're paying a fee for you to buy that soda on a credit card, which is just silly. So, um, there are stores that do not accept credit cards, and there are stores that make you pay, or sorry, make you spend more money to allow a credit card. So, let's get started. Um, processing sales transactions. A sale in which the customer pays for the total amount of the sale at the time of the transaction is called a cash sale. Credit card and debit card sales are treated as cash sales because the business receives its cash in a very short time. Pause there for a second. In all of your documentation from the book, be it your problems, your tests, everything, they're going to refer, as, they're going to, refer to credit cards being cash. They're not going to refer to debit cards very often, but just know that credit cards and debit cards are treated as cash because the business receives the cash in a very short time. Um, using a credit card will produce a different outcome for a consumer, you and I, than using a debit card, but merchandising businesses account for them as if they were the same. Pause for a second. When we, as consumers, use credit cards, we pay for that purchase at the end of the, um, I don't know, the, the period that our credit card allows. I mean, I know what days our credit cards are due. Um, so when we use a credit card, we pay for that purchase on a specific date when we write a check for everything we have put on credit um, during that month, per se. When we use a debit card, it comes out of our checking account almost immediately. So, I mean, I use my debit card as much as possible. And I need to know that there's cash in my checking account before I use it, if that makes sense. Processing sales transactions. A specialized computer used to collect, store, and report all the information about a sales transaction is called a point of sale terminal. Be it a cash register, a computer, or even these days an iPad. I have a note here to read what I highlighted on page 294. Um, before any sale is entered, the number, description, price, and quantity on hand of each item of merchandise are stored in the POS, the point of sale terminal. When processing a sale, the sales clerk uses a scanning device to scan the universal product code, which is the UPC symbol on the item. The POS terminal matches the number represented by the UPC symbol with the merchandise number to obtain the description and price of the merchandise. When all of the merchandise has been scanned, the sales clerk enters 
the customer's method of payment. For cash sale, the sales clerk enters the amount of cash given by the customer and the POS terminal computes the amount of change. For credit and debit card sales, the customer swipes the card in the card scanner and identifies whether the card is a credit or debit card. The POS system produces a receipt that contains detailed information about the sale. Um, that was a lot of detail for me to type into a slide, so I read it from the book. Um, moving on, the report that summarizes the cash and credit card sales of a point-of-sale terminal is called a terminal summary, also known as a Z-tape. Here's an example of a terminal summary. You see we've got, um, hold on a second, my pen turned off. You know, we have um, the date, time even, but visa and our account number and our total, and they even break it up with sales tax and sales. You know, MasterCard, our account, total, sales tax and sale, um, debit cards, cash, okay, and then they total it all up. Um, processing credit cards. Sales information for credit card sales is stored in the POS terminals. A report of credit card sales produced by a point of sale terminal is called a batch report. Okay, A batch report can be detailed showing every credit card sale or the batch report can be a summary showing only the number and total of sales by credit card type. The process of preparing a batch report from a point of sale terminal is called batching out. Here's an example of a batch report. Um, we have a merchant, we have the terminal number, so you know what cash register or whatever it came from. Um, batch number 37, you know, Visa, MasterCard, debit cards, and all the totals. And each one, you know, the count, how many MasterCard sales did you make, the sale, returns, net. So sales minus returns is net, sales minus returns, net, etc. All right, getting into the nitty gritty. Um, we have our cash receipts journal. A cash receipts journal is a special journal used to record only cash receipt transactions. Remember, cash can be debit, credit, or actual cash. Um, a cash discount on a sale taken by the customer is called a sales discount. So here at the beginning, let me get a highlighter out. Um, I have cash receipts that do not occur often. They're recorded in the general columns. Most of the stuff what we're going to do, that's going to be blank. Um, cash receipt transactions affecting three accounts, either accounts receivable credit, sales credit, and sales tax payable credit. Okay, and then we have cash discounts on a sale taken by the customer. Okay, we're going to use these four columns a lot. And at the end of each week, Three Green batches out and prints a terminal summary, which is assigned a sequential number by the POS terminal. Terminal summary serves as the source document for weekly cash and credit card sales transactions. The total of the terminal summary is recorded as a single cash sale transaction. So the total of the terminal summary is recorded as a single cash sale transaction. And that is at the end of each week for these people. They also batch out and print a terminal summary at the end of each month so they can analyze their monthly sales. Okay, looking at cash and credit card sales. Um, on November 4th, we recorded cash and credit card sales at 6280 and then plus sales tax for a total of $6,656.80. Your terminal summary is 35. So we have the cash, which is a debit, goes right here. The sales, which is right here, that's how much the customer um, purchased the item for, plus the sales tax. So sales credit plus sales tax equals cash debit, right? The terminal number, TS35, check mark, don't know why. 
account title is a check mark. I still don't know why. We'll get to that as we learn it. And the date, which is a given. Cash receipts on account. So November 4th, received cash on account from Edmonds Hospital. Covering um, number 448, receipt number 610. So we've got the cash, which is a debit, and accounts payable, which is a credit. Okay, the receipt number, R610, Edmonds Hospital, and the date. Okay, just a little reminder, calculating cash receipts on account with a sales discount. Sales invoice discount is $29, so you would subtract it. 145, oh goodness, that's awful, sorry. Minus 29 is 14, 21, 30, 40, yep. Journalizing cash receipts on account with sales discount. So the example we just saw in the previous slide, November, ooh, sorry about that, highlighter. Huh. November 5th, they received cash on account from Palmer Dentistry for this amount, covering sales invoice number 462 um, for $1,450, less the 2% which is $29, receipt number 611. So receipt 611, the date, Palmer Dentistry. Um, we have the cash amount, accounts receivable, minus the discount, okay? That's what I showed you up here a little bit. Okay, oh, the answers are there for us. How does the POS terminal determine the price of an item? Before any sale is entered, the number, description, price, and quantity on hand of each item of the merchandise are stored in the POS terminal. What are the two types of batch reports? A batch report can be detailed, showing each credit card sale individually, or a summary of the number and total of sales by credit card type. Okay, that's the one that we've seen. Okay, we've seen the summary. Last slide. What is meant by 210 and 30? credit terms. If a customer pays the amount owed within 10 days, the sales invoice amount is reduced 2%. Otherwise, the net amount or all of it is due in 30 days. Good job.